Many, many times I had the fortune to go to the ring with uh, Bruce Brody, and uh, you know he was quite, quite a man. And you know I, I was lucky enough to be a partner with him for a long time. But everybody I think knows in the wrestling business, especially Terry, is that. Bruiser was the really smart one. I could do it, I could go out and go better to the post and everything else. But Brody was the guy that really understood the business. And uh, you know, I, I think people, the young guys that watch his tapes and everything, they can really learn from watching him. He had great psychology. Something that I don't know if it's lacking in, in today's matches. But it's just it's just something that Frank developed. He was constantly thinking what he could do to get the people and to get them back and to get them back next week and get them back the next week. And that's hard when you go week to week to week to week. And uh, Brody was a really a master at that. So you know, I just want to you know, it's really nice to be able to get up here, especially with somebody who started me in the business, Terry Funk, and uh, he knew Frank a long time too, and uh, we all went to West Texas at one time, and uh, Terry Funk, he has a lot to good to say about Bruiser Brody. I certainly do. I don't think that there's ever been such a friggin' tragedy as what happened to Bruiser Brody. And why did it happen to him? He was not a good worker. He was a tremendous worker. He suspended disbelief so well that he died for it. He died for it. That's how ridiculous that got down there in that area at that time. I have never been back to that area since that date, and I have no intention of going. I have great respect for Carlos Colon, but I don't have respect for their country's rules and regulations and way they treat people that have done the wrong things and how they do so many other things to let them, just let them go. I love him. I love Bruiser Brody. He was one of the toughest guys that I have ever known. He came originally from Iowa State to West Texas State where we played football together. And he was an amazing guy. He'd come down there and he was absolutely crazy and he would disrupt the entire team. I was on the first team, he was red shirted on the third team. And Bruiser would disrupt it by just tearing a hole in a line or whatever he had to do. And he would do it every day. And he was just about as tough of a guy as I ever met in my entire life. And then Bruiser, you know, is a little crazy too because he got kicked out of Iowa State and came to West Texas and then he was down in West Texas, and uh, one night he came into the dormitory, the athlete's dormitory, and uh, he decided he was going to get an axe and cut down a cherry, cherry tree in the front yard of the dormitory. So he got the axe, he took it out there, and he chopped the entire cherry tree down. Then he went back to his room and nobody saw him. <laughs> nobody knew it was Bruiser Brody. The coach next day came out to a team meeting and he said, I want to know 
who cut down that cherry tree? And I guess Bruiser Brody thought he was uh, George Washington or something, or, and he was never going to tell a lie, but he said, uh, uh, Coach, Coach, he says, I chopped down that cherry tree.